Like I could see myself playing this a lot and I can't wait to, you know, fight you with my kitty and you with your puppy and I'll destroy you. No, you won't. I will kill you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to a brand new episode of the Definity Pill podcast. My name is Alex, this is Lucian, and today we'll talk about the Internet Humans launch and the future plans so that our community can know what to expect. I already went about this briefly in the weekly review, but let's go more in depth. So we started with a 10,000 collection and then we reduced the supply to 8,000. Right, so the first thing we should address is the fact that some community members um, said that we actually didn't sell out because we had to cut the supply down to 8,000. Uh, but I don't think that's the case because what we did with um, eliminating 2,000 NFTs from our collection is that we adapted to the market conditions uh, that were back then. What exactly were the market conditions then? So I think, and other people as well, um, that we are in an NFT bear market at this point and also during our launch. We have seen projects that uh, before our launch and even after our launch that they didn't manage to sell out, like not even close to their whole supply. So the space is maybe fatigued. There were like three big launches in March. We had the dinos, which sold out. Then we had the computers, which sold out. And then we had the Internet Humans, which was also a big collection. Yeah. We took this decision to burn the 2000 NFTs from the collection, and it was not an easy decision to take. But as always, we listened to our community and we decided to burn them to further increase the value of each NFT in the collection. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of people from the community actually wanted us to airdrop the rest of the supply to the to, to those who minted the collection. But in our opinion, that wouldn't, wouldn't have been a good decision because that would further uh, decrease the price, the floor price, and we couldn't have done such a thing. That would have yeah. lowered the price even more. Yeah, exactly. So I think we made the right decision for everyone and it wasn't an easy decision, just like you said earlier, because a lot of rare items and a lot of uh, rare NFTs were actually burnt in the process. I think the community can understand, you know, the reasons behind our decisions. And I don't think like people should be upset about it, but rather, you know, be happy. Now, now the collection that you have minted is even more scarce. I think that's a good thing. We mentioned both in the previous podcast that we did about the Internet Humans and in a Medium article that there will be four more collections coming up as airdrops to Internet Humans holders. Those collections are called Dystopia, Dark Age, Odyssey, and Sapiens. But I think the burning question that everybody has, what makes one eligible to receive those airdrops? Right, so we actually already started working on the artwork for the Dystopia collection, which is going to come uh, as an airdrop pretty soon. And to be eligible for this collection, you basically should hold in your wallet two internet humans in order to get one dystopia human. This is going to be a two to one collection that is going to be airdropped. So if you would like to receive one, again, you should hold two internet humans from the first generation inside your wallet. So it won't matter which internet humans you hold, as long as you have two of them, you'll be eligible. That's great. And like there is going to be no other way of getting a second generation airdrop unless you hold like two internet humans no this is going to be the only way you can get a second generation human can we give more details about the third collection is it going to be a similar model with the second one yeah i think so i mean obviously we should take the freedom to be able to adapt to the market conditions and to how people receive it but our thought process at this point is to follow a similar uh, distribution model and we'll go into more details about the odyssey and the sapiens which are like six months away we'll we'll release more details if we do change our mind so yeah. we're gonna have an eight thousand collection the the first internet humans and then a four thousand and two thousand yes so some people were complaining that they won't receive one for one airdrops for the, you know, whole collections. So we thought that if there is no scarcity, like for future collections, the price for all collections, you know, would stagger or would go down. And that's the reason why we went with a two for one model for subsequent uh, generations. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we could easily airdrop one to one every collection. That's very easy for us to do. I mean, there's n nothing too difficult. 
But as you said, we are always looking for ways to uh, increase demand and to create scarcity and to make the best decisions for the community. So as we said earlier, like we burned 2000 NFTs and in those 2000 NFTs, you know, some rares were burned, including the spectral humans. And while a few were burned, many weren't. So they will still be able to form the spectral council. But what is the spectral council? Right. So a portion of the ICP generated through the internet human cell was locked uh, inside a eight ear neuron. Uh, now the spectral council will function more like a DAO. And every month, uh, the spectral council members will be able to vote and come up with proposals about how the rewards generated that month should be spent. Can they vote to airdrop the ICP to the community, for example? Yes. Can they, they can. vote to... Uh, like do a lottery and send all the ICP to one person? Yes, they can pretty much come up with any proposal and vote on that proposal. Awesome. And where will the voting happen? Yeah, so most likely the vote will take place on the gated Discover community that we have on the gated portal. Probably on Discord as well. We are going to have some roles for the Spectral Council, but I think the safest to say is that Discover will will be the platform for, for this. That's great. And uh, they will have, you know, like a role in the Discord to show people that they are spectral human. And uh, then again, we have to uh, start holder roles for the internet humans as well. So we, we know that we will start assigning them. Actually created the roles. All they have to do is to uh, open a ticket and uh, drop their, their wallet address. Awesome. So it's live right now. Yes. Okay, cool. So if you know you have at least 10 human, you can open a support ticket on Discord and we'll take care of it and uh, give you a role. Yeah, and one more thing to add about a council, one spectral equals one vote. So if you have multiple spectrals, you have multiple votes uh, on the proposals. Actually, which they vote uh, to spend the rewards, like to send it to the community, that would be fun. Mm -hmm. Like if everybody uh, accepts that, yeah, it's, it's their ICP. So speaking of Discover, like all airdrops, we're thinking to have them through the gated community. But let's get more in depth about the golden items because we mentioned that they will have, you know, some more utility. What benefits will they bring to their holders? As we mentioned in the previous podcast about internet humans, uh, those people who hold golden items will be entitled to receiving free wearables whenever we will implement uh, the wearable system for, for the internet humans. And the wearables will be different than what uh, people are used to with puppies and kitties. Can you, you know, give some examples of wearables? Yeah, so we have two main wearable types that we have in mind. So the first one would be backgrounds. Uh, we're going to, to design new backgrounds uh, because as the collection stands now, it's only one very basic blue background and we plan to change that through wearables. Other than uh, backgrounds, we actually plan to release pets that will be equipable on the NFT. Also, we plan to make these animated. Some can be animated, some can be uh, just static images, but these are our current plans. The golden items are extremely scarce. Like there is like how many? There should have been like 30. And now with the burn, they're like probably minus 20%. So that's like 26 golden items in the whole collection. Yes. Uh, so if you hold a golden item, you are 100% going to receive an airdrop. So as long as someone holds a golden item NFT in their, uh, in their wallet, they will be entitled to receiving free wearables from every single drop. Um, and on top of that, we will airdrop 100 extra wearables to random holders. Also in the gated community on Discover, like we will show like sneak peeks of, you know, future games, but we'll get to those in a second. Speaking of games, what about the future Internet Humans game? The Internet Humans game will take place inside a city. Uh, some members of the community also came up with this suggestion, and this is something that's been on my mind for, uh, for a long time. We will develop the game in such a way that players can connect their wallets uh, to this game, and the most basic function of the game will be they will be able to run around the city, uh, talk to other people, and stuff like that pretty much. The city itself uh, doesn't have a history, doesn't have anything pre-built, like in terms of lore or anything like that, but the history and lore will be built by players um, while playing the game. So pretty much what our goal with this game will be is for the story to actually be created by players um, and player interaction. I think there's a lot of people that want to build, you know, the story and the lore behind something, but what will keep the people inside the game, you know, to keep on playing? Over time, a lot of activities will be added uh, throughout the game. So we plan to add different professions, different activities that you can do. For example, in, inside a city, uh, there will be a casino uh, and you will be able to meet other people in there and play poker and bet your money, whatever you want to do. 
uh, then you can get out of the casino and go and start working as a chef, for example. Every job will have its own mini game, so to speak. So you're going to work as a chef for a while, you get some token, and then you can spend it on whatever you want. So we do plan to integrate a token in this game. Yes, because the game itself will be based on several main pillars, and one of these pillars is going to be an economy. And we will try to replicate um, a realistic economy that's going to be built between players. So the game will essentially grow over time. Uh, we will add more activities over time, more jobs, more things to do. For example, we can also add vehicles at some point. So after someone, someone makes some money in the game, they can spend that money to buy a vehicle to be able to travel faster throughout the city and stuff like that. So it's going to be like a big city eventually. Yes, it's going to be a big city eventually. Um, I think the first iteration of the map is going to be probably smaller than it will eventually uh, reach. But uh, if the game ha will have demand and a lot of people will be interested in playing it, we will surely expand the map even further. The maximum number of players will be like how many? Like, are we going to integrate like all the generations into the game or will it be only for the first generation? Well, I think that's a possibility. Uh, but I think for the first iteration of the game, uh, the maximum amount of players will be set to 8,000, which is the first Internet Humans collection. And then we have two routes we can go through. Uh, we can either integrate the rest of the collections in the game if we don't come up with some other uh, game for, for those. Or we could look at implementing uh, breeding for the first collection. And then, you know, the kids grow and they can play into the game. That being said, the humans game will be developed in the background and you, Lucian, will be the game designer for this particular one. Yes. So everybody, if you have suggestions for this game, you contact Lucian on our Discord server and like give him all your opinions and, you know, ideas for the game. Yeah, we'll probably make a channel when we get to more in-depth building and designing the game. And we will also probably use Discover, the gated community, so everyone who owns a human will be able to uh, participate in the game development. Is there like an estimated time for uh, the development of this game? Uh, not at this point. Uh, right now, I, I've started to write actually the, the game document, which is going to be used by the developers and designers. And I don't want to say an ETA for this game because we first have to develop and publish the kitties and puppies game and as you said this is going to be uh, developed in the background for now we are grateful for everyone who minted internet humans because this allows us to develop this vision and to develop a game that i personally wanted to play uh, for a long time so i think this should clear you know many of the questions that people had but if you have any more questions you can reach to us on our discord and we'll be more than happy to answer to your questions now let's move on to the puppies and the kitties like people are expecting a game like do you have any news on that uh yes actually the game i think it's coming sooner than everyone might think andy from our team actually uh, assumed the role of lead game designer for this one and he managed to put together a team of talented developers, Unity developers. Um, and we're also working with a designer that is going to help us to to fulfill this vision and to, to launch the game. Yeah, so the game is going to be like a PvP game. We don't want to spoil the fun and tell, like, say exactly what it is, but it's going to be PvP. You're going to play with either a puppy or a kitty and they're going to fight. And then the winner will take everything yes that's great the game is fun it's replayable but it's actually super complicated to design a game it is it yeah. is it takes a lot of time it takes a lot of energy um it takes a lot of management but it's it's fun ultimately when you come up with a product it's very fun be on the lookout for uh sneak peeks we'll be having those in the coming uh, hopefully weeks and also with the puppies and kitties game we applied for achievement unblocked which is a competition for games and Andy made a video about like the gist of the game and how the game will work. And uh, we will let everyone know like what happens with this, you know, with our application. The video is not public yet, but we're thinking to publish it like closer to the launch of the game so that you guys will be able to see like the animation we did now. And then you'll see the final product. And like, I, I, I think the difference is going to be like crazy. The game is fun. Like I could see myself playing this a lot. And I can't wait to, you know, fight you with my kitty and you with your puppy and I'll destroy you. No, you won't. I will kill you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I can't wait for people to find out what this game is about. So I think this is it. Like, if people have any more questions, like, we are on Discord ready to answer each and every one of your questions. We will make, like, a Medium article explaining what we said here in the video, like, again, because some people prefer reading to watching videos. 
And yeah, I think that's it. As always, thanks for watching. My name is Alex, this is Lucian, and you just took the Definity Pill. Thank you very much, and see you next time.